he says basically that a woman has to learn to concentrate. In your life, you must concentrate. The universe is a multifasticity of God. The universe is a multifasticity of God. That's a beautiful. Charming, ugly, beautiful, not beautiful, great, not great, destructive, constructive. I'm not going into the philosophy of it, but all of this universe is God. There is nothing which is not made in God. Evil and divine, it's all divine. The question is, have you developed yourself to concentrate? If you have not developed yourself to concentrate, you can be a Christian, you can be a Buddhist, you can be a Muslim, you can be a Sikh, you can be a Hindu, you can be a Jew. That non-concentration is your problem. If you cannot concentrate, you cannot conceive. If you cannot conceive, you cannot get pregnant. If you cannot get pregnant, you cannot deliver. It isn't natural, and then you fake yourself. It is not that you are in trouble, it is that you have a gap in your concentration capacity, which as a human being, you should have built. You should have been taught as a child not how to become a graduate, but how to graduate in concentration. When you want to focus, you want to. Any out of focus camera, any camera which is out of focus will give you a bad picture. How can you not concentrate on life and expect to give you a good life? The secret of life is not what I give you. Anybody who is out of focus will have a hazy picture, right? So your life has a hazy, daisy picture because it's not in focus. You don't like that. Now, I'm teaching you to concentrate. What for? We are Americans. We can go in a big store and we can buy anything we want in a plastic cart we're neo-modern idiots. <laughs> that's, that's a good term. You have to understand. You have to appreciate. You have to concentrate. These are the greatest, greatest gifts. And this is a whole a lecture that he gives on this whole uh, art of attention and attentiveness. But so when you develop your, your concentration capacity, which is what we're doing in the meditation, then you will have the capacity to concentrate on the things that are what you want to amplify. And that alone, if you took nothing from this weekend, you took that alone, and you really started to get in focus what it is that you want to amplify, what you want to concentrate on, what the kind of picture, the projective radiant personality that you want to project into your relationships, project into your reality experience, project into your perceptive reality, um, all of the kind of experiences that you have. Because many of us have had this experience where we both, you and a sibling grew up in the same house with the same parents, and like your sibling is like so offended, or maybe you were that person, and like the other, the other sibling is, thinks the parents are the greatest thing since apple pie. That's how me and my brother are with my mom. I mean, she was the best mom ever. She made me tofu sandwiches. We danced, you know. I mean, we danced to Joni Mitchell. Like, she, like, I didn't go to school. I went to dance movement therapy, you know, um, Goucher College. You know, she took me out of school, basically, to go to, you know, her master's uh, degree with her for several years. Um, and her second master's degree, that is. And her father wouldn't pay for any of her education. She got two master's degrees. Like, this, I mean, this is an amazing mother. And just like the most beautiful, beautiful, caring woman. But my brother had a totally different experience. So you know, that's just, I always use that as an example of like perceptive reality. It's the same context with completely different perceptive gaze. So if you learn how to concentrate on what it is that you want to amplify in yourself, in, in Yogi Bhajan said, the only difference between me and you is that I amplify my strengths and not my weaknesses. That's it. In all of the like, like, you know, kind of more Piscean schools of like women's etiquette, that's totally part of what they're teaching too. It's like, you know, dress, dress for your strengths and, you know, like dress for the, you know, I mean, all that kind of stuff. It's like these old school ways, but it really is, I mean, that is in one way, and Alison Armstrong talks about it in a book called The Queen's Code um, or Queen's Code. Anybody read it? 
I, I don't like the read because I don't like the colloquial like storytelling of it. It annoys me. But the the she's right on. She's right on about what it what that kind of code that has been passed down and lost in in kind of this and again one of the reasons why I'm I'm harping on this this weekend is as a women's movement which we are you can make a phenomenal difference in the way that you are amplifying this this rise of the divine feminine on the planet and and in a way where you're really focusing on because more kind of um, inadequacy more violence Silences and more misunderstandings are not going to create the world we all want to live in. We are a dead, silent majority. That's such a powerful t thing that Yogi Bhajan said. So in order to change that, you, but you have to be able to do it in your relationship, first and foremost, or in your next date. Like, if you went on your next date and you just decided, I don't care if I'm attracted to this person, I don't care if they fit my, my list, which, you know, I've been laughing about. Oh, man, that list. Um, I don't care, you know, like, none of that. I'm just going to be here as the moon reflects the sun, and I'm going to really, really, really amplify everything that is so amazing about this person. And, and you will have a whole different dating life. You'll start to enjoy it because it becomes something that's like so much more of a kind of relay, which is fulfilling rather than the self-fulfilling prophecy of like, oh, I went on another date and he was just stupid and like whatever, you know. I mean, but I hear this all the time. The rhetoric is heavy. It's really heavy.